Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and in case you guys haven't noticed, I currently have four NVIDIA GTX Titans at my disposal. As you can see, they're currently set up on our test bed and I have not been idle with them. I have run them through myriad benchmarks in order to determine the type of performance that you can achieve when you have a simply ridiculous amount of video card graphics power at your disposal. I'm going to be sharing those uh, benchmarks with you guys in just a moment, but I wanted to uh, preempt this a little bit. Of course, the big question is going to be, well, what else is going on here? We do have a pretty high-end test bed, so let me take just a moment and walk you guys through that. Okay, guys, I have gone handheld for our demonstration of our test bed here. So first off, of course, four NVIDIA GTX Titans, uh, GeForce GTX Titans, as you can see them, in all of their glory right there. Uh, they're beautifully designed. They work quite well. They have, uh, these are actually work as intakes on this side over here, blower style fans, projects most of the heat out that side right there on the left side. And I can tell you, if you put your hand right here while the benchmarks are running, it does get quite warm. You'll note that the benchmarks typically will show you the uh, Titans running at about 80 degrees. And that is simply because GPU Boost 2.0 actually wants them to run at 80 degrees. It will overclock them, it will use GPU Boost to get up to a higher frequency and uh, that will basically mean that you're always going to be running at those higher temperatures. So if you're comparing these to other cards, please bear that in mind, as they will typically always try to run at 80 degrees Celsius. Uh, here's our memory. That's uh, G-Skill Trident X. Uh, we're running 2400 speed memory in here. Uh, currently just running at 1600 speed since this is our stock setup for our test bed. Underneath that, you can sort of barely see, if you look right in there, uh, the Asus ROG, this is a Rampage for Formula motherboard, a uh, very fantastic motherboard. It's been rock solid in all of our benchmarks. Uh, and then you also see a sizable power supply under there with lots of cabling coming out. That's a Rosewell Hercules 1600 watt power supply. Uh, you definitely need a lot of juice for four Titans, and the Hercules has been performing admirably and has been up to the task thus far. For our solid state drive, we have a SanDisk Ultra Plus SSD. Let me just flip this around a little bit so we can get a closer look over on this side. You'll notice our cooler. This is a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, which is maybe a bit underkill for this particular build. Uh, we're actually going to be going with a closed loop cooler um, in just a moment. Also around here on this side, you'll notice there's a little supplemental Molex plug that is connected. And that is uh, simply providing supplemental power to the PCI Express uh, lanes. And uh, I will note that I actually forgot that plug when I was initially doing these tests. Ran about half of them, and then I had to rerun them. But fortunately, performance difference was pretty much negligible. It was all within a margin of error. Uh, oh, and then of course, underneath all this, underneath the CPU cooler, is our CPU, and that's an in, uh, Intel Core i7-3960X. And uh, again, this is our stock test bed, so everything is running at stock speeds. So there's a look at the test bed, and before we jump into the bench benchmarks, just a couple more words here on the Titan itself. Um, we have already published a uh, general overview video on the Titan, so you can check that out if you, if you want all the detailed specs. Uh, we also have our one- and two-way Titan benchmarks available on a separate video on our new ActiV YouTube channel, so you can check that out as well. There are some additional video cards thrown into the mix there, so if you're looking for more comparisons, uh, you definitely can check that video out. Of course, the one and two-way tests will be included in today's benchmarks as well, so you can kind of see how it scales going up the chain from one, two, three, and four-way configurations. Uh, the Titan, though, is just a beast. It's the fastest single GPU video card that's currently available. It features 2,688 CUDA cores, a uh, GPU boost clock of 876 megahertz, and actually in our tests, uh, the boost clock actually jumps up into the 900 to 1,000 megahertz range. Uh, also for power draw, that was definitely one of the uh, key factors here, and of course we have our Rosewell Hercules per Hercules power supply, 1600 watt, which was uh, providing us enough juice for the configuration. But with the four-way tests under max load, uh, it was varying about 1200 to 1300 watts power draw, which is a lot. But given the amount of horsepower that's here, um, it's actually pretty reasonable, depending who you ask, of course. Now, a little bit of uh, notes on the benchmarks themselves, uh, because you will note that when you're going from two-way to three-way to four-way SLI configurations, your scaling is going to change depending on what benchmark test that you're running. Also, this is going to be affected by the drivers that are being used, and of course, these are fairly early drivers, but um, when NVIDIA released the Titan benchmark drivers, they were actually pretty uh, fleshed out. So what you'll notice is 1080 performance 
almost no scaling, uh, depending on the test, of course. But these cards, even a single GTX Titan, is not recommended for 1080 gaming. They're recommended for higher resolution, which is why we also uh, ran our tests at 2560 by 1600. So, at that resolution, the tests that I found scaled well uh, were AVP, Crisis 3, and Battlefield 3. Actually, AVP scales well in, in SLI configurations, just about whatever you throw at it. But Crisis 3 and Battlefield 3, 2560 by 1600, definitely see some performance jumps as you're going to 3-way and to 4-way. I do want to note that Battlefield 3 caps at 200 frames per second, so once you get up to, so you see, if you see the benchmarks that are 198 or so, that's not the cards not performing, that's Battlefield actually capping that off. We saw marginal improvement, so still improvement from 1 to 2, but not quite the same amount of uh, jump up uh, with 3D Mark, uh, Unigen, as well as Metro, uh, Battlefield 3 at 1080, uh, as well as Stalker. So those are the tests where you'll see a pretty big jump from 1 to 2 way, going to 3 way and to 4 way. Still improvements, but not quite as, uh, didn't scale quite as well as with uh, the other tests. And then the tests that unfortunately did not scale well at all, Borderlands 2, Dirt Showdown, and Far Cry 3. I don't really have a good explanation for why they didn't scale well, but simply put, if you are focusing on those games, a three-way or four-way Titan setup, probably not going to be your best bet. But that being said, I've rambled along, on long enough. Let's go ahead and jump into our GTX Titan four-way SLI benchmarks. So there you have it guys, our NVIDIA GTX Titan benchmarks featuring not just one and two-way, but also three-way and four-way SLI. Pretty much seeing what kind of performance you can get in modern games right now if you're going to be throwing about as much money as you possibly can at a system, which I think this just about encapsulates. Uh, as you can see, performance at 1080, you really don't get much. Uh, you do of course get great performance with a single G GTX Titan, but again, if you are only going to be gaming at 1080, NVIDIA is actually recommending that you may, might veer towards a, a GTX 680 or something in that arena. Of course, if you're a hardcore Crisis 3 player, well, a Titan is suitable, uh, even if you are at 1080. And then of course, if you're playing at higher resolutions, 2560 by 1600, uh, 5760 by 1080 is another one that's three 1080 monitors, and actually uh, pixel count for that is roughly comparable. It's a little bit higher, uh, more pixels than 2560 by 1600, but that should uh, give you somewhat of a comparison uh, if you are going to be going for three 1080 monitors. It's another good configuration. Of course, you have, if you have a bunch of 2560 by 1600 monitors, well, that, that's another thing that the Titans would be more suited for. But anyway, uh, hopefully you have found a little bit more information, and hopefully you've enjoyed looking at this high-end hardware, because I have definitely enjoyed playing with it and sharing all the information with you. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed this video, you can find more just like it on our Newegg TV YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Newegg TV.